because now we have this translation that is required, uh, someone needs to do the translation between virtual memory to, to physical memory. And who's doing that? Uh, believe it or not, it's not the kernel. It's actually the CPU. There is a piece in the CPU. It's called the Memory Management Unit, MMU. The CPU has a register called CR3. And that register points to a physical address that has the necessary metadata for this translation that we're going to talk about how this translation is happening between virtual memory and, uh, and physical memory the cpu does this walk to actually does the translation so the mmu every time we're trying to access something the mmu kicks in it's like all right this is a virtual address let me convert to a physical address up oh, let's, let's walk the memory so now we're working physical memory to do that translation we get back the physical memory and then we, we actually do the read. I'm going to talk about the virtual memory. We have to do, what, what is this? Why do we need this? You see, physical memory, which is the RAM, when you insert these slots, you get X amount of gigabytes. All for you, the user, which you spin up a bunch of processes. If these processes all have access directly to the physical memory, things can go wrong. There are a lot of challenges because these processes will eventually step on each other's toes. If I write something as process A, what makes process B not accidentally overwrite the stuff I wrote in the same addresses? Right? Because it's a shared space. It's like, it's like literally shared memory between all those processes. So security is a concern. Corruption is a concern. And... Uh, not, not to mention just uh, you being aware of certain addresses is just odd as a as a user. It's like, all right, I, I, I need to really make sure that if I start from this address, I need, I cannot go this because oh, someone just happened to write some data here. I need to jump in. Imagine actually writing code to do that. That that's just insane, right? So uh, yeah, so that. There are a lot of problems with just having direct access to that. But it's amazing because it's fast, because it's a direct access. So but there are there are these problems that came came with it. So it was determined that a virtual memory per process is to be created. So each process that spins up, you get you get almost infinite an amount of addresses from zero until two to the power however the the uh, virtual address space is 64 bit really we only use 48 bit because we don't read that much two to the power 64 is it's crazy large number right that it's impossible to have a process that large it is impossible to have a memory that large not alone a process that is large right so people even often the kernel uses only 48 bit and this is in this episode i'm, I'm going to only focusing on this 48 bit address right so yeah you get zero until two to power 48 and that's massive and that and it's okay for multiple processes to use the same virtual addresses because it's a private space Right, and when you want to write to something, uh, to an, a particular address, the kernel will catch that, and then will somehow create a mapping between the virtual address you try to access and the physical memory, and then create a chain, create a mapping between those two. So the next time you try to access this particular address, it knows that oh, it's actually this physical memory. And that's fine, right? So next time, if if another process tries to access another memory, right, virtual address, even if it's the same number, it doesn't matter. You get they gonna be mapped to a completely different memory, physical memory. And if your lazy ass as a process didn't use that virtual memory for a long time, the kernel will say, "Wait a minute, you didn't use this stuff, and why am I locating physical memory for you?" Kick out just kicks you out and it will insert a pointer in that virtual memory mapping it says this guy is lazy they did not use this stuff for a long time so i'm just marking this stuff and hey this is the page that used to be there it's it's, it's somewhere in memory uh, it's somewhere in desk and this is what's called swap right 
So by just doing this virtual memory, tons of features were born. You have what we just explained, right? Swap. You can you can technically run so many processes way more than your memory capacity because we're going to just uh, swap you out to disk and we're going to have an infinite memory almost, right? So yeah, this will also create, of course, ab the abstraction of slowness because sometimes your access determining access will change based on whether this the pages and desk versus a memory but it gives you that 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 feature another feature is shared memory you couldn't do shared memory i mean it's very hard to do a shared memory with just physical memory but now if i spin up node.js 10 versions of node.js 10 processes of node.js all of them technically have the same source code, right? Node is a C++ program, or is it C? I can't remember. So that is compiled, and it's in the text area in the ALF. So if you spin it up, that's the same content. It's the same page. Why would I ever want to load 10 copies of the same code? That doesn't change. So the kernel will just load the code in memory, right? And then we'll point the first process to that. So the virtual memory of the first process will map to the same physical memory. The virtual memory to the second process for the code space of Node.js will map to the same physical memory. Although it could be the same virtual address, could be different, doesn't matter. But the idea of sharing memory is, is beautiful, right? And of course, security, now that we have this layer in the middle, we can essentially know that, oh, you're trying to access something you don't belong to. Tons, tons, and tons of features. Because now we have this uh, translation that is required, uh, someone needs to do the translation, right? Between virtual memory to uh, to physical memory. And who's doing that? Uh, believe it or not, it's not the kernel. It's actually the CPU. See? There is a piece in the CPU. It's called the Memory Management Unit, MMU. The CPU has a register called CR3, and that register points to a physical address that has the necessary metadata for this translation that we're going to talk about, how this translation is happening between virtual memory and, uh, and physical memory. And then the CPU does this walk to actually does the translation. So the MMU, every time we're trying to access something, the MMU kicks in, it's like, all right, this is a virtual address. Let me convert to a physical address. Oh, let's, let's walk the memory. So now we're walking physical memory to do that translation. We get back the physical memory, and then we, we actually do the read. So that's the MMU is responsible for this stuff. And because every process have different mappings, it has to, right? Every process has different mapping. Uh, my process is going to have a different virtual mapping than the other process and the other process. So every process should have their own mapping. So you can imagine how expensive this can get. Right? So because of that, if I context switch processes, that CR3 register will update to point to the mapping table of the new process and so on so that the cpu knows that oh i'm i'm, I'm walking this memory structure right to do that translation and this mapping is actually done using this page tables so let's talk about page tables what are these so in order i want you to kind of think about this the way I try to talk through problems is to introduce, and instead of introducing a concept like page table is blah, 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 I try to walk backwards to the problem, to the original problem. Because remember, every solution, everything we ever created as human beings came from a need, came from a problem. And unfortunately, the way we teach things is we teach the solutions but we lost that piece, the problem. So there is no joy in learning anymore because we, what am I learning? I'm just learning stuff. So I always 
I'm fascinated by going back to the basic and finding the problems. And this is one problem. So if I give you this, I'm going to go build a kernel right now to do the mapping. Don't read anything. Don't do any search, anything, because you're not going to gain anything off this search. Yeah, you might find stuff and you're done, but it's not satisfying. But if you do it yourself, there is there is a challenge there. There is a there's you're hitting your your head against the wall and that's the joy of learning to me